Howdy, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, it's Friday. Uh, the sunny child. I was in uh, Bidolf yesterday uh, and, and I got absolutely pissed wet through with the rain. And today I'm in St Albans and it's blue sky and really sunny. Look at that. So let's, uh, let's have a look at that beautiful, uh, beautiful church as well. So, anyway, St Albans, Cathedral City. Uh, we have been before, but before we launched the YouTube, so we've got no videos. This is the first video of St Albans. We only did a few last time we were here. Uh, it was on the way back from London one day, we stopped. So we had the car, couldn't, couldn't do very many. Um, so today I'm gonna have a proper go at it. I'm up by St Albans City train station at the moment. I'm gonna start from here, work my way behind me. Uh, the oldest pub in the world, potentially, uh, is in St Albans, Ye old Fighting Cox. Uh, 893 AD, I believe is the, uh, the year they, they put on that. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get there. But yeah, should be a good day. Hopefully the sun will hold out for me. Uh, I forgot how hilly St Albans is. Yeah. So I'm going to have fun with some hills. But anyway, stop number one of the day then. Not far from the train station is the horn. You could say I've got the horn. No, don't say that. My wife will kill me. Stop number one's the horn. It's a super little place to start. So yeah, just down from the train station. We've got a of head uh, up in towards the city. But um, yeah, it feels like a, a nice little music bar to... Uh, Sort of a burgers, nibbles, um, hot dogs type menu. Yeah, got some, got some ale. It's a, it's a trink one. Trink's not a million miles away from St Albans where I am, so it is, uh, yeah, a nice little place to start. A good, uh, good looking little pub with a nice outdoor space. Got an emo night coming up. Maybe I'll come back to St Albans for an emo night. I fit in well there. But yeah, it feels like a bit of a, bit of a music bar, which I really like. Pull table there. Top little start pays to have a face that sticks out because when people recognize you they say oh so what's your name uh, Shane. so it literally called me and said I, I recognized your face and said do you know much about the place so I said, oh, not an awful lot so it just happened to mention to me I mean I, I told you didn't I that I thought it feel, felt like a music pub oh it's a music pub all right with a gig venue in the back room uh, and I've just I've just had the list reeled off young bloods cut one of his first ever shows here you two on that stage in the 70s supergrass Kasabian you name it the list goes on of bands that have played in this iconic, lovely little venue. So yeah, definitely guys, check these guys out. The Horn, St Albans. This is a wicked little gig venue. And I, I almost missed the little gig venue. Great pub, great way to start. I mean, that is the very definition of a beating heart live music venue that's probably punching above its weight for the size of that little room. Some of the, uh, the artists and the acts that have played on that stage, absolutely incredible. So what a great place. What a great place to have started my day today. Uh, been seeing something like that. Yeah, Reef, Happy Mondays. There's pictures all over the wall. All the pictures that are up on the wall are bands that have played there on that stage. Magnificent. Walk towards the city, so two minutes, a minute probably, is the next one along. Robin Hood, St Albans. So a little bit of Nottingham for me. Yeah, a little bit of Nottingham in St Albans. And then I'm dreading those hills up there. But, you know, Robin Hood. Stop number two. Wait, a little second stop. So this, uh, according to the things outside, one cider pub of the year, not so long ago. I'm gone for a cider. Obviously with my last time in Harvey, I couldn't ignore Harvey's Brewery. So I've, uh, I've dived in with that Sussex Best and it's very nice, actually. But, look at this jukebox. What a stunning looking pub out here again. And uh, we're gonna take my beer and I'm gonna go and explore the beer garden. Because uh, that also looks great. Thank you. Even turn the music down for me so I could, uh, I could record. What, what lovely people I've met so far. Well, let's, uh, let's head on out here and have a look at this beer garden. Because again, it looks pretty special. And it is. Lovely. It's a right sun trap out here. And yeah, I'm going to die walking up and down these hills in this heat. Super start, this is, yeah, loads of ciders, boxed ciders and things like that are spotted in there as well. So, proper camera style pub, that is. No frills, just good beer, good people, and a, and a really a nice establishment. Got another 200 yards or so down the road. It's gonna be my third stop of the day. This is the Victoria. Again, little uh, little garden type space on the side. Some live music, Bank Holiday Sunday. Greg Dillon, not Bob Dillon. And the Victoria then, it's gonna be stop three. This really looks and feels like it should be a Stone Gate pub, but I can't see any Stone Gate brand it's on their website, so it probably isn't. But it looks like it should be a Stone Gate pub. It's very nice, very modern. Uh, very well presented. Um, decent enough beer line. There is a real ale on up there as well. Uh, plenty of TVs for watching 
the sport and stuff. Garden, a girl to the rear. Yeah, it's a nicely presented part, but honestly, it screams stone gate to me. But I, honestly, there's no stone gate branding, so maybe it was a stone gate and they sold it. Someone will know. Yeah, I asked. It's a Heineken, so that must be a Star Puffs one. Um, looks like a stone gate. Very well presented, though. Stop number four, then. Uh, I've walked straight down, basically down that side street, Marlborough Road, and walked down there. It's taken me about five minutes. And my next stop is going to be the Beehive. Now, we did visit this on our first trip to St Albans, and I thought it was really, really cool. So, uh, in fact, most of what I'm going to do in the next couple of hours, I've probably done before. They do uh, ramen stuff. That's their uh, food. Ramen Electra. Great name for a, uh, a pop-up kitchen, isn't it? Artisan ramen, homemade organic noodles. What I remember from last time, I remember thinking how cool that was. Let's go into the beehive again. It's a, it's a gorgeous pub, this. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't get a ramen because they're uh, they, they stop until five o'clock, so I'm a bit early for that. But got three ales on. Plenty of crafts and decent options, but it's just a beautifully well presented publet. Absolutely stunning looking. And again, they've got a wicked garden at the back. Uh, in fact, I'll head out there and, uh, and show the garden as well. It's brilliant. Just a little back garden. Absolutely love this, this pub. I think it's super. Uh, and yeah, that ramen type offering for, for food is a bit different than what you would normally find as pub grub places, isn't it? So it sort of sticks in my mind and stands out. I'm glad they're still doing it. But yeah, I think I came last time on the, the middle bit when they, they weren't serving food either. So still going up on. So second revisit of the day. Again, it's a two minute walk. Um, there's, there's sort of back streets I'm in now, but there's quite a few pubs littered in, these, in this back street area. So uh, that one of the, of the beehive I've done, this one I've done, the White Heart Tap. Um, yes, yeah, so I've done this one before and the Beehive. But there are some down these side streets that we haven't done uh, on the last visit, so I'm gonna try and get those done and ticked off on my walk round towards Ye old Fighting Cocks. So my fifth stop of the day is the White Heart Tap. Really liking it in the last time we came. So there's a, a good mix here between craft and uh, cut. So, got three. And three. And old Rosie. A bit early for me to get onto the old Rosie, but. I've gone for the, uh, the sonar from Lane Brew in here that I don't think I've tried before, but what a beautiful looking little pub it is in general. And again, there's a wicked beer garden space out the, uh, out the back. It's, it's on me. Tell them, there you go, there you go, now you're on. Now you're on. <laughs> you, could, you could have done that, yeah. We, we won't talk about that. <laughs> but a great little, uh, great little beer garden space again. Yeah. <laughs> Up onto the uh, up onto the back with some deck chairs and all sorts out here. Cheers, great place. I think that White Heart Tap is a is a blinding a little pub. Come out the front door of that turn right, walk 100 yards, turn right again, then another side street. I told you we were in there, in amongst the little side streets. This was a new one, so I think it was a bank holiday Sunday or something like that. We came last time, and this wasn't open, which was a bit of a disappointment because being a Forest fan. I know, I know, I know. Most of you knew that already though. Being a Forest fan, we play in a thing called Garibaldi Red. And this pub happens to be called the Garibaldi. So, you know, for pretty sad reasons, I was really looking forward to uh, getting in that last time and it wasn't open. So, it's open today. So this will be my sixth stop of the day, called the Garibaldi, just down this side street. And it looks pretty beautiful from the outside. Uh, Fuller's pub, judging by, the, uh, judging by the signage. Let's go and see what it's like inside, shall we? I'm well pleased to be in here. This is it's just as beautiful inside as it is outside. Some plenty of ales and stuff on. So it is a Fuller's pub. Good craft, keg, and every sort of uh, option you could have. And it is just a beautiful looking, look, all the little alcove, little rooms and things. It's an absolutely gorgeous little pub this. I absolutely love it's these square bars that you can get all the way around. Are absolutely brilliant. And this fantastic little pub thing about these back streets like I said to you is you really don't have to walk very far to get to the next pub along so I've come out front door of the Garibaldi turn left walk back to this uh this road that we were on originally where the White Heart Tap was walk 20 yards and turn right so I'm on what's called Sopwell Lane and as you can see right there in front of me is the Heron Hounds didn't do this one last time we were here either so very much looking forward to being inside here but I mean St Albans is is so beautiful 
the uh, the city itself is just absolutely gorgeous. I haven't really got to the big hills yet, so this is why I'm still quite jovial, quite chatty, not out of breath, but trust me, the hills are coming. But yeah, Heron Hounds then is gonna be, stop. See, this is where I lose count. Three, four, five, six, seven. Stop seven, I think, Heron Hounds. Gorgeous. Uh, so you come through the front door and literally the, the low ceilings and the beams and stuff almost take your head out. But beer offering in here. So you've got several hand pools and real ales. A little bit of craft, brew dogs ones. That wingman is a particular favourite of mine. I do really like that. But it is, again, a, a beautiful pub. So this is obviously an extension bit. It's this bit down here that is the low, low, low ceilings. I said I nearly a. Uh, yeah, so that is at my eye level, and that's how the, uh, the ceiling looks. Great place, uh, lovely staff, great pub. It's just a beautiful looking pub. It's got another uh, beer garden space. For a city centre, St Albans really is spoiled with its beer garden spaces. It is. Yeah, looking down, it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty nifty looking pub, isn't it? I'm, I love St Albans. It's pricey though, St Albans. Nothing has been dirt cheap so far. It's pretty, it's pretty expensive. And this is just a little back room. Um, beautiful. For the beams, uh, the ceilings, like walking into the gents. Like, so now I'm stood on things, there is, it does step down, but yeah, that's how, that's how low it is. Nice oh, signs, David Beckham, uh, memorabilia, a little and stuff. A little extra garden bit at the back. It's beautiful, this. Right, come out of the Heron Hounds, and you have to walk exactly that far. I don't know how many yards that is, but it's not many, is it? To the next one, which is the White Lion. Uh, we did do this. This was the one down the street that was open uh, last time we came, so I have done this before, but you know what? Let's nip in anyway and show you what it's all about. Because from what I remember, again, it's got like nice low ceilings and things like that. Nice old pub. So silly to walk past, eh? Who walks past pubs and doesn't go in? Certainly not me. Really pleased to be back in here. So I really liked this one the first time we came around. So they've got a great mix of keg and cask. And so you would find plenty of good craft options and stuff as well. And it's just a very well presented again. Gorgeous old beams. I mean, you look at some of the beers they've already had on in here at different times. Plenty going on uh, on all of that in there. But gorgeous pub. And again, the beer garden in here. I feel you've got to see it. Again, it's pretty special. Bear in mind that we are in a city centre. So all of these beer garden spaces are literally city centre beer gardens. You don't find that many places, do you? But uh, around, the, around the, other, the other bar called The Snug, uh, there's plenty of cask options, five different hand pulls and stuff in there, I think. But yeah, Wicked Pub. This is The Snug, what I was telling you about. These are the options and stuff we've got in here as well. It's a wicked little pub. Fantastic little place. And you can always tell by some of the beers they've got displayed up, some of the great quality they've had over the years in it. Great little place. Right, the next one along, so only 100 or so yards down the road is this. It's the Goat Inn. And just look at that. That. It's pretty nifty. You know, it doesn't actually happen until five and it's half past four. So, you know, there are people in there, like staff. I'm going to knock on a window and try my luck. But hopefully we can get into it. Yeah, of course we can. It looks gorgeous, that, doesn't it? This is incredible inside. So it's a 15th century pub. Again, I managed to sort of worm my way in just before they opened the five. It's only half four. So I knocked on the window and, and tried my luck. The very lovely lady let me in uh, to show you a little bit of what they've got in here and it is just exquisitely beautiful so obviously they're setting up but you can see can't you of the the beams and the rooms and everything else it's just gorgeous an absolutely stunning pub to get into so yeah i'm really grateful to them for letting me in a little bit early to be able to show you that's barely get included it is fantastic i've gone for this so these are what used to be called charlie wells charles wells brewery now called brew point in bedford <laughs> where i grew up ironically uh, I've gone for that Lodestar. Never tried that before, so, so let's see what it's like. That's pretty good. I love it. This, this has got the perfect blend of just about everything. Like, absolutely super little pub. Amber's so lovely, she's even told me about the beer garden. Now, this is a bit of a secret, because not a lot of people know this one's here, apparently, because it doesn't look from the road. So you, you walk past the road just there. But, again, they have another brilliant city centre beer garden space. So if you didn't know this beer garden was here, You've got no excuses, you do now. It's a super pub, really friendly. And yeah, another little beer garden. So the pub is, is 15th century and it is just, it's just exquisite. Got to come and see it for yourself. Amazingly beautiful building, but it's the running theme of my day. That's a cottage, so 
that's a that's a house look at it wow <laughs> st albans is mind-blowingly beautiful to walk around like the sun's shining haven't yet got to the hills well, i'm just about to but just magnificent it's a magnificently beautiful city and if you could afford to live here I'd, I'd suggest probably doing so the further down this street honestly it's it's insane it's absolutely insane the age of some of these buildings and how phenomenal they really are but i did tell you it wouldn't be long enough so here we go first of uh, many hills i assume walking up here luckily it isn't actually that far to go to get to the next one and it is one that again we've done before and thought was absolutely beautiful so i've got to nip back in there and you can probably see it now in your shot just there white heart hotel so second white heart the other one was that i went in earlier is the white heart tap this is the white heart hotel tudor restaurant and bar and what is no cars coming for a second Let's step out and show you that. Like, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. And from what I remember, equally as beautiful inside. You've got to see how beautiful this is, isn't it? So yeah, Tudor, Tudor Bar Hotel. It is. It's pretty impressive. The whole thing about it is just absolutely gorgeous. And the thrones. Fully functioning hotel still. And a really beautiful one at that. Bar one. See about that? One batch of Heineken, but yeah, just uh, just sort of walk through here and look at this. Like they are, they are pretty impressive, aren't they? It is such a gorgeous looking place. Um, restaurant side of it, just beautiful, isn't it? I am. Um, I love things that are this age and this beautiful. It's pretty grand, isn't it? So that is right there. I'm on the, I mean, I'm not really looking forward to this hill, I'll be honest. But they had me at Cheese Beer Wine. Near enough, right next door, as you can see, the Bishop's Cave. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about cheese or wine, but you know what? I'll pop in for a beer. So the Bishop's Cave is up next. Uh, yeah, I mean, they had me anyway. The cheeses do look pretty impressive. And there are some Scotch eggs in there, so I haven't eaten all day. I might have a Scotch egg. Thank you. And uh, yeah, look, I've, I've even found some Vault City cans and stuff in here. Good selection of stuff that they've got in there. I think this is wicked. I'm glad I've stopped in. In all honesty, St Albans might just have peaked. So not only have I obviously got, yeah, a, a raspberry cream soda, Vault City, but this, uh, this Scotch egg is, uh, is, is pretty damn impressive. Honestly, this is delicious. Like. Mm. Normally, I'm a fan of them still warm with uh, a runny yolk and stuff like that. But the quality and the flavour and in the, in stuff in this. Oh, chef's kiss. Yeah, absolutely superb that. Flavour in there, quality. I'm loving it. It's the, uh, the far end. A little place where I was sat. Nice little, uh, little tap and stuff up there. But one absolutely superb, wonderful little place with plenty of... Uh, yeah, plenty of great wines and things. Staff are really friendly, really helpful. Just told me about Mad Squirrel Brewery having a little tap room over here as well. So I've got to go over there. That'll be uh, that'll be the next stop. But yeah, what a wicked little place. So apparently, Mad Squirrel Brewery's tap room. So we did one in. If you watch a Burke Hampstead video, uh, you would have seen one. I was dead impressed by their beers. So I'm very happy to find that there's one here. Didn't know about it. But, so I've come. So that's the, the White Hart Hotel, obviously. So I walked a couple of yards back down the hill. And across to here. But if I keep walking, apparently, through the gardens, of St Albans Cathedral. Look how, look how amazing that is. Keep walking through here apparently. Gives you a bit of culture, a bit of history as well, doesn't it? Keep walking through here. I will come to Mad Squirrel Brewery Tap Room in St Albans. That's impressive, isn't it? Quite, quite stunning. I mean, you can't really, uh, <laughs> can't really quibble at that, can you? Very impressive. Let's go and find Mad Squirrel. It really is in the grounds of the cathedral. <laughs> so, Mad Squirrel Tap. Can't be bad, can it? And, for the moment, at least, it's got me out of walking up that awful hill. So, you know, I'm happy. Anything that gets me out of walking up that main hill, I've got to be impressed by. 
So yeah, these guys, the one in Burko, really, really good. Much smaller than this, the Burko one. But I absolutely loved it last time. So let's get involved with this one. So yeah, it's, it's a bit smaller, I'd say, than the Burko one, obviously with the, the little garden and stuff. Same, same sort of size as the Burko one, but they've got a load of really good beers, including their own sap, the Toucan, that I've gone for. Uh, as you can see, like the untapped uh, board with the, the stars and stuff on. But um, someone tell uh, over that football shirt over there, are uh, into Shikari. Are into Shikari from St Albans? If they are, I didn't know that. Stanley confirms, Enter Shikari are from St Albans. Who knew? Clap, 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 clap. I didn't know. I knew I could find a way to not have to walk up that hill. And I have found a way to not have to walk up that hill for now. So I come out of Mad School Tap, go back to the uh, Cathedral ground, come around the other side of it. I mean, just look at that. Come around the other side of it and walk through the gardens down uh, this way. Because in, uh, according to Google Maps, in four minutes, I'm going to be at the Yeld Fighting Cox. So I'll see you there. Google wasn't wrong. There's those umbrellas through there. You can see them. They tell the story. The fact that it is just here. I am very mindful of that, though, that having, even having walked through the fields and the beautiful park and the, and the sort of the cathedral yard, I've been going steadily downhill. And if you go down, you've got to go back up again at some point. For fuck's sake. This better be something. Well, it is. This is something pretty magical, but I ain't looking forward to the walk back up. So here we are. Um, right. So last, well, a, few, a little while ago, we covered in episode two of uh, 10 Pubs You Must Visit, our brand new YouTube series that you should definitely check out. We covered uh, Nottingham's ye old trip to Jerusalem that ha lays claim to being the oldest in, in England. It's, it's so up for debate. I mean, how, there are no records. Records from those sort of times are sketchy at best. So I'm not entirely sure that anywhere can definitively be called the oldest inn in England. But I will tell you that this one has a real good shot uh, at the claim. So this is from, I believe, I can't see anything written on the outside, but 793 AD. This is ye old fighting cocks. So originally a cockfighting uh, ring. Uh, it, it wasn't a licensed premises back in 793, or whenever it was apparently. Uh, Rumour has it it became a licensed premises in around maybe 1100, give or take. Uh, there are so many different stories, but believe me, I've been here before and it is mega impressive. It's beautiful, so you need to see it. So we're gonna, we're gonna show you around, but this is for me probably a better claimant to oldest inn in England than Nottingham GL trip to Jerusalem. So let's take you in and show you. Here we go to Ye Old Fighting Cox. Just to, just to kind of touch on what I was saying a minute ago. So as you come through the door, you'll find an article pencil. Is this the oldest pub in Britain? Uh, and it lists then the uh, Skirid Mountain Inn in Monmouthshire. I've not done that one yet, so I have to go and see what I think of that one. Uh, two that lay claim, again, we've not done. The Clacken Inn, Loch Lomond. Uh, you can see there, number four, that Yale trip to Jerusalem claims. The Bingley Arms in Bardsley, Leeds, not done yet. The old Ferryboat Inn in Hollywell, not done that yet. Here. And the Eagle and Child, there you are. In Star on the Wall in Gloucestershire, also not done that yet. I, I don't think that you're ever going to settle this debate. I don't think you're ever going to say definitively what is the oldest inn in England, but you know what, I'm definitely going to visit them all and bring you all two in that series, so. But I'll show you around. Look at, look at how. So this would have been uh, probably where, down down the, the bit down here, where the, uh, the cockfighting ring originally, probably would have been. One of the beauties of this place is, it not only is it a stunningly beautiful old pub, but it goes heavy on ale availability and stuff like that. So plenty of real ales to choose from in here. Some really good bits and pieces and loads of choices amongst everything else. But this is just one room. I'm gonna get a beer and then we'll uh, we'll continue. We'll continue the little talk. Forever living by my untapped these days. So I've gone for Arthur Chief Jester. Uh, I've never so we'll do that. But let's have a uh, let's have a wander around the rest of it because like I said it is Stunning, but look, the, the beams are so low, yeah. Mind your head is right as you come through. But what a, what a stunning looking place. So 
So E.R. Fighting Cox is acclaimed by the Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest pub in England, 8th century pub. I mean, that's uh, some accolade really to have, isn't it? But beautiful looking inside and out. So the, uh, the beer choice is, is not bad at all, is it? If I can uh, squeeze, because there is another city centre beer garden out here that is, again, quite sizeable. So whatever you could want around here, you're always going to find in St Albans a really good garden space and bits and pieces. Is it the oldest inn in England? I don't know. Nobody does. But it's pretty damn impressive. I uh, a subscriber on YouTube the other day uh, when I was doing the uh, ye old trip to Jerusalem uh, put a comment on saying uh, actually ye is still just said the. So I asked in uh, ye old fighting cocks. I said. Uh, how do you guys say the, uh, the, the Y-E? Is it ye or is it the? And I said, well, it's ye. Obviously, that's why it's Y-E. Again, it's another debate that I can't sell. I did Latin at school and I would have said it's ye. But some people think it's the. Ye old fighting cocks. This has definitely got to be my favorite name for a Thai restaurant ever. Thai rack. It's pretty clever, that. Right, I knew that the uh, the order walking downhill would eventually come back to haunt me. So it's been uphill from the uh, the fighting cocks all the way, and I'm on this street now, going back towards the city centre bit. Now I remember last time we were here, we did this coming up on the right, Dylan's at the King's Arms. So the pub, old pub, what's called the King's Arms, renamed Dylan's at the King's Arms, I believe, after a dog from the old landlord. So that is that. So let's go in and do that again. Yeah, beer wise in here, they've got you covered. A wealth of craft, hazies, IPAs, a sour, uh, a really good sour from a uh, double barrel brewing that I've never heard of. Mango flavoured. Right on my street, absolutely magical. But yeah, decent amount of craft and stuff. Got some ales, uh, some real ales on the bar there. But yeah, good little craft lineup. And look at the beams and stuff in it. It is such a super looking little pub. With a big dining space and room behind. I, this is this is so up my street. I love the place. About another 200 yards up. It's, it's a slight incline, but I'm back on what I would call like level footing now, at least. I don't think there's anywhere else to go up, so I think I'm back. Um, is kind of uh, kind of a square, a square with the church. It's obviously got sad, sad. It's got scaffolding and stuff around it, but I mean the, the beautiful buildings continue. And there is this just here called the snug. Never done this before. So I've counted as well. So this is going to be stop 15. Dylan's was 14. There's been another 15. Looks to be other stuff on this uh, on this little square, on this little area. So let's uh, let's step in the snug and make it 15. Yeah, I'm glad I wanted it. Here. This is again beautiful old building. Again, I'm standing on I'm standing on a floor that is not. Look, look, look at this. Look, look at the chair leaning backwards. This is how old these buildings are in St Albans, but they're great. Honestly, they're absolutely magnificent. And they should indeed hang something cool up there because that sign, you know, I think it's quite funny, but they should. It's beautiful, this again. An absolutely exquisite looking little building. I can see why it's called the Snug as well, but yeah, I love it. I love, honestly, I'm falling more and more in love with St Albans the longer I spend here. The, uh, the more I'm sort of going, you know what? St Albans is absolutely belting as a, as a city. So beautiful. I found a load of craft beer, a load of other stuff. It's just a, a great city. I thought that snug was pretty awesome. So I'm sitting on this, this kind of square thing. I, honestly, I wish this uh, scaffolding wasn't here because that looks like it's probably pretty beautiful uh, when that scaffolding isn't all around it. So it's a clock tower. But yeah, it looks pretty beautiful and what a shame that's around it. But just opposite the snugs, the snugs there, opposite that is this, the boot. Um, this is another one that someone sort of claims he's got a, a little claim on Pat's being the oldest pub in St Albans if the fighting cox isn't and all sorts. There are so many that claim it, aren't there? But the boot is going to be my 16th stop of the day. Whew, I think I'm doing all right, you know. You can tell it's old again. Plenty of real ales. We've got four good real ales on, on that size. Proper old, old, old looking pub, isn't it? A couple more real ales on that side and a couple of ciders. But it is. It's got some crafts. It's got a couple of, yeah. A couple of, uh, couple of beaver oil, Quick, uh, Club Tropicana from Tiny Rebel on, but a gorgeous looking 
little pub again. I can see why this might claim to be the oldest as well. It feels dead old. Side as side. Uh, right, in all honesty, it's decision time for me. I've done 16. Uh, there's one more I definitely want to show you on this side, sort of, of the city. Where, having looked at what's left to do in St Albans, it's worth a second visit. So I'll come back and I'll do the other side of the city in a, in a second video. Uh, in, a, in a couple of months or something, probably. But, yeah, I think that we'll, we'll finish then on an even 17. I know it's not an even number. We'll finish on 17 for tonight and we'll finish here with the peahen. Because, I mean, again, look at that. Look how beautiful that building is. So that basically there, the road, turn right on that road and go down there, is the hill I didn't want to walk up earlier. That's got the uh, the White Hart Hotel and the Bishop's Cave and stuff down it. Down there. So you can see how steep it looks, can you? See how steep that looks. So I didn't walk up that, I walked round this back bit. So I've basically done this side of the city, um, which I'm happy with, and I hope you are. But look at that. Uh, I mean, that gives me Mardi Gras vibes, sort of like New Orleans type look to the outside of it, isn't it? Beautiful looking place. So we'll finish here at the Peahen. I have done this one before, so I know it's equally beautiful inside uh, as it is out. They've got a stonking beer garden as well at the back, like much bigger than you would expect looking at it from, from right here. So let's finish up on the Peahen, show you around inside, and we'll have a chat before we uh, venture mosey on back to the hotel so I can start getting this video edited. It's gorgeous in it, it's very grand, very big. Hello, These are like River Town. So I don't know anything about River Town really, but I've tried this uh, here, this, uh, new, it's this one. This one here, Session India Pale Ale. It's really good. What a, a gorgeous old building. But I told you the garden here is particularly good. I say particularly good. I mean, it looks like this. So, <laughs> tough to say, but it is. And absolutely, again, you would not expect, would you, to find such massive gardens in the city centre of anywhere. But look at that. Impressive as fuck, isn't it? So we want to have a, a final shout I'm saying, aren't we? Um, yeah, St Albans is brilliant. It's a beautiful city. It's lovely to walk around, especially in the sunshine today. It's been a great day. It's expensive. Uh, uh, compared to a lot of the, the northern towns and things like that, this is this is London prices here. Uh, but you get what you pay for, don't you? I've been at some stunning places. Uh, some really old places. I've had, I've had a mega day out and I would highly recommend St Albans to anybody and I can't wait to come back into the other side of it. Cheers for watching guys.